Okay, so today I'm not going to be writing anything. It's all going to be typing. So let's get back to our three state FSM. Whoops. Um, close. That's not what I want. I want the project, simple FSM. There you go. All right. So today what we're going to be doing is there. So this is the 3921 week two, lecture two. And today it's just going to be Modelson. Okay. Uh, next lecture, I'll do signal tap. So next week, we'll start uh, case study two, uh, which is the PS2 interface with uh, FSM and FSMD. Okay. So finite state machine and finite state machine with data path. Uh, so yeah, do you have any questions before we get started? Okay, so let's get started with model sim. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create the, so we're going to create the single pulse generator, or we're going to specify the single pulse generator uh, simulated in model sim. That's the goal. So let's do our little single pulse generator. So this is the one clock cycle pulse generator. So let's see, we have entity uh, single pulse generator is port. So end single pulse generator. Uh, clock obviously reset is input standard logic. And I also have an input coming in. So in standard logic and then pulse out is going to be out standard logic. Put that there, don't need that. Okay. And let's see, correct directory, single pulse generator, VHD. I don't need to synthesize this because I'm simulating this. Uh, however, I'm going to synthesize it to just to make sure that at least synthesis wise, it makes sense. Number one. Number two, you should always run a functional simulation. So note that we will run a functional simulation in model sim. Uh, that is, we will verify functionality of the design by functionality, well, does it function? For example, in this case, do you actually get a pulse that's one clock cycle long? Do you get something that's two clock cycles long? And that's obviously incorrect if you get something that's two clock cycles long. Um, also note that uh, Chu covers model sim, I believe in pages 42 to 47, if I remember right, okay? So you can go through the way Chu does it. He does it one way, I'm gonna do it a different way. Just pick one and stick to it. Uh, well, model sim, we cover model sim because uh, that is, this tool is the industry standard for simulating not only digital systems, a bunch of other things, but for us digital systems. Um, please understand that if our design does not pass functional simulation, it will not work in reality in, in, on the physical board, okay? But if our design passes functional simulation, it may work on the physical platform because there is the issue of timing. Uh, so, issue of timing, that is, the simulation in model sim is not real time, okay? We're only doing functional simulation. We could do a timing intensive simulation in model sim. Timing intensive means real time, okay? But that takes up too much resources. In industry, they do do this. They do time intensive, timing intensive simulations. Rather, we will look at and we look at an in-system debugger. That is, it's a debugger that you download with your design, which is signal tap. Okay. Uh, next lecture. Okay, this is a big picture. So again, understand that you don't, you have to do some kind of simulation. Period. All right. Signal tap is not really simulation; it's in-system debugging, and you can't really use signal. I mean, it is very difficult to use signal tap. That is, it takes time. 
when you're, for example, debugging a NIOS 2 design. Because signal tap is a module that gets downloaded with your design. Okay. So, and therefore, let's say you're going to look at one set of signals and then you want to look at another set of signals. You don't have incremental compilation. So you have to recompile the entire design. Okay. So it takes time when signal tap, especially when you have a large design. Of course, you should debug a module by module. But in that case, model sim is a lot easier. Okay. So saying that signal tap is better than model sim or model sim is better than signal tap doesn't make any sense. Okay. It's just it's comparing apples to oranges. One is one thing, the other is the other thing. I would recommend you learn how to use both. I'm going to cover both. Okay. And if you do digital system design in any form in industry that's worth a damn, right, you will run into model sim. So, okay, let's see. So let's get back into specifying the single pulse generator. So this is going to be a Mealy machine of single pulse generator is begin end oops, Mealy machine. And by the way, I use Java convention for naming my signals. Uh, you don't have to use that as long as you make it very, uh, as long as you make the signal names descriptive. Okay, they're not variables, they're all signals. So type state is what do we have? Input zero and input one, yes? When the inputs are zero and one, those are the current spawning states. Current state, next state is of type state, okay? Here is our state memory. Well, I'm not gonna write a comment because I'm gonna call it state memory. Is process, res, oops, doesn't matter how I list the sensitivity list, but in process, it could do a state memory there as well, which I'm going to do. Okay, so if reset is one, then what? Current state is input zero, yes, else and if, if rising edge of clock, then current, you don't have to take this down when you can, in the sense I'll email you this zipped uh, project later today, instead of the lecture notes, because this is the lecture not input one that's wrong current state is next state okay end of right so there's your state memory that's it you don't touch this anymore uh, this is state transition and output logic it's a mealy machine so I'm gonna put the output because the output is a function of the current state and the input I'm gonna put it in here okay the output end process state transition law Output logic. Okay. Uh, 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 let's see. Ta, 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 ta. Case current state is end case. So when input zero, I'm not going to use a when others. I have only two states, so I'm just going to make it explicit. When input one. So if input is zero, yes, then you do something. Else and if, if input is zero, what do you do? You st the next state is still input zero, yes? And then the uh, pulse out, that's what I called it, is zero, yes? Else, uh, next state is input one, pulse out is one, yes? So when you're in input one, if input is zero, then next state, you go to input zero, else you stay in the current state, yes? But here, it doesn't matter, your pulse out is always zero, yes? So only in this clock cycle will your pulse out be one, ideally, okay? That's what it is. So what I'll do now is I'll uh, copy this to a notepad, I'll pause the lecture so you can take this down, or mainly, you can ask questions. Let's see. Uh, uh, uh. Let me do it this way. Uh, uh, uh. Well, notepad doesn't help. Let's see. Word helps. Point. Nope. So anyway. So this should be pretty obvious. Okay. I'll leave this up. So there it is. 
So actually, I don't have to pause the lecture. Do you have any questions on this? Yeah. Yes. Yes. It has to be synchronous. On the way, I'll say, I'll show you one way to synchronize in the lab. The question was, right now the reset is asynchronous. Does it have to be asynchronous or synchronous for timing closure? It has to be synchronous. Yeah. So what I'll do over here um, for timing closure, we will use an external synchronizer on our global reset. In other words, we will essentially clock key zero, okay? Makes sense, so we'll pass it through a flip-flop. Clock key zero means pass it through a D flip-flop. That's what we'll do. It's much easier to do that than like having, I mean, you can have synchronous resets within the clock, okay? But the reason why I'm gonna do that actually is I'm gonna use a face lock loop to uh, get my clocks and it's a much nicer solution uh, in the sense when you do timing closure since this is synchronized what I'll do is I'll cut the reset from timing analysis that's exactly what we're gonna do don't analyze timing for it because it's clocked so that's how we take care of resets it's, it's a nice way to take care of it for timing closure and that's what people in industry usually do any other questions Okay, so now let's instantiate this at the top level. Make sure we get something that makes sense when we are looking at the RTL view and then get into the simulation. So, boing. so this has to be a component at the top level. So instance single pulse generator map. All right, port map. Okay, we don't need this. So clock. I think I have time today. So what I'll do is once we finish the simulation, we'll actually instantiate. We'll try and instantiate a face lock loop. Okay, and simulate that because we have uh, multiple designs using the global clock, and you don't want to do this. Okay. You want to pass clock underscore 50, the board clock through a face lock loop to buffer it so you don't uh, cause unnecessary uh, fan out on this line. Yeah, question? Huh? No, there's no reason. I can use 100 megahertz clock. I'm just using 50 megahertz clock because it's just easier to use. I could use 100 megahertz clock. Uh, let's see, input, uh, input, for now, I'm going to use SW0012, uh, but uh, switches are not debounced, okay? So what might happen is you're using a 50 megahertz clock. So when you change your switch, all right, you're going to get multiple uh, hits and your state machine is going to read that. That is That won't be obvious in models, okay? In model sim, again, we're just testing the functional simulation. Do you actually get a one clock cycle pulse? So this is just a comment for synthesis. Pulse out, I don't know, LED G0, 1, 3, 4. Okay? Because I've used 0, 1, 2, and 3. Let's just use LED 4. And make sure I have imported the switches. Yes, there it is. So let's do a quick control K. See what we get. Most likely, I have errors, which is fine. We'll fix them. Two. Ah, come on. Always takes long the first time. Come on. There it is. Apparently, I have four, four hyper-threaded processors as well. Ah, I forgot to import my libraries. So let's fix that library IEEE, use IEEE standard logic 1164.all. 
use IEEE numeric underscore standard dot all. Let's do this again. Wait, however, the extra hypothetical processes will not be used by default. Oh, wait. Okay, let's see how I can enable. I'll figure out how to enable that. Uh, parallel compilation will use two of the two physical processes directed instead. Okay, fine. Oh, I don't have parallel compilation on this, I think, because it's the web edition. But anyway, so I got some design out of it. So let's see what I got. So here's our old FSM, okay? Here's a single pulse generator. And it's interesting that although we specified it as a state machine, the synthesizer did not really need for a state machine. It was, I guess, so simple, it's just one flip-flop, okay? This makes sense if you think about it. You have two states. So how many flip-flops you need? Only one, okay? But does this really work? Well, let's ask Modelson, okay? All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to use ModelSim. Now, understand that ModelSim is a complete, is a separate tool in its own right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invoke ModelSim as a standalone tool. That's how it's done in industry. That's how I recommend you do it. You can invoke ModelSim from within Cordis, but I don't recommend you do that. Yeah. New. So, I'm going to go into my project directory. I'm going to create a new folder called Simulation or Sim, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And within here, we're going to create something called as a test bench. So a test bench is basically, uh, so let me just create it and start typing it in with comments. Uh, 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 let's see, it's a text document, but it's a VHDL file, so change the extension. And since you should functionally check a module at a time, I'm gonna just simply check the single pulse generator with, a, I'm gonna call it TB for test bench, or you can just write it out, test bench, okay? Yes, change the extension, I don't care. Come on. Oh my god. I know why it crashed, because I pressed, accidentally I pressed left click and right click at the same time, so it's got like completely confused. So let me pause the lecture. So continuing, so apparently don't press left left click and right click at the same time you can crash windows explorer okay. all right so uh, this is a test bench for test uh, for the single pulse generator module okay note that this is not synthesizable basically a test bench is a well like it says it's a test bench it's bunch of um, it's where you test your modules so you you have to create your own clock you have to create your own inputs your stimulus and then check the outputs okay so any vhdl construct is uh, is valid here because it's not synthesizable actually let's look at uh, choose book uh, let's see no wrong book So I think I said page 42, I think it's 69. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so if you look at, um, here's the test bench, which Chu does, okay. By the way, this is for combinational logic, I think, and it's overkill, right? But like I said, uh, model sum is overkill for combinational logic, but this gives you the idea of, uh, he uses weight statements, which are not synthesizable, okay? That's fine. The reason why weight is not synthesizable is there's no, what is what is 200 nanoseconds mean? Like no idea for the synthesizer. Okay, uh, he uses assert. So report means it prints out uh, data to the model sim. Uh, cons it prints out messages to the model sim console. I'm not going to use assert reports. Okay? You can do it like this. So anyway, uh, note that this is note that test benches are not synthesizable. One of the things I always get confused about is how to do the entity declaration because there are no ports, okay? Generator test bench, 
think is no ports because it instantiates everything like there is it uh, not in yeah instantiates like clocks etc so in single pulse test bench that's about it semicolon okay architecture test bench of single pulse generator test bench is begin in test bench okay the first thing we need to create is our 50 megahertz clock so i'm going to create a signal called clock 50 megahertz of type standard logic and i'm going to initialize it to zero okay all this is valid like this zero initialization makes sense here because it's a test bench you cannot use this in a synthesis environment because this initialization doesn't make any sense if you want to initialize something explicitly use a reset state in synthesis okay create uh, 50 megahertz uh, 20 nanoseconds period clock okay so that is process begin in process so all i'm going to do is i'm going to say clock 50 megahertz you not you flip it every 10 nanoseconds yes so this should create our clock all right so uh, 50 megahertz board clock if you will so this is our there's no board, like we're simulating the de1 board clock that's all we need uh, let's see instantiate dot or mut module under test okay so dot is device under test if you ever used a i curve tracer you might have heard of the word dot okay and for that i need a component declaration so that's what are we testing we're testing this one let me just copy it from my cordis project there it is caps lock yep all right so and then let me instantiate this also by using um, Qu quartus uh, let's see this is and what i like about notepad plus plus is syntax highlighting and it's interesting like in the sense if you look at the command line down here no, or the, not the command line, the message window, it shows that we're using VHDL syntax. So I like Notepad++ a lot. This is called clock 50 megahertz now. Okay, I need a reset. Signal reset. What else do I need? I need input and pulse out. and call this standard logic. Okay, You could leave this as SW standard logic vector, but there's no reason. Switch, um, uh, physical switches are not debound. So let me just leave that comment in. So somebody looking at the simulation should definitely know that we're only testing functionality. Okay. All right. Uh, process for stimulus inputs. Okay. So this is process. Notice these process don't have any sensitivity lists. Do you have a question or? Okay. So no question. So all right. So what do you got to do? Uh, uh, um, reset. Is active high right so one uh, input is zero let's wait for 100 nanoseconds okay. uh, and then let's take it out of reset okay wait for 100 nanoseconds then let's make input one okay and then let's wait forever I'm not using an assert okay like chew does and you need this weight because if not this pro like note again understand that you're synthesizing hardware so these processes execute concurrently right not sequentially so if you don't have this weight it'll keep executing over and over again maybe that's what we want uh, note that i'm testing we are testing only one possible input functional simulation i'm not going to do that you should do that functional simulation because i'll just give you the idea functional simulation should test all possible to test if possible all input combinations and in this case you can for most practical designs when you have a large module you can't right it's not physically feasible so what you should do again is you should debug module by module okay you really shouldn't uh, design, for example, an SDRAM controller completely and then check it. 
uh, you should check the FSM for the SDRAM controller, for example. From there. Right. So we have created our test bench. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start Modelson. So let's do that. Uh, let me close Qualdus because I don't need it. And I don't need Choosebook either. I don't need that. All right. So Modelson, I have a shortcut on my desktop. It should be installed with your... When, I, when you install Qualdus, you should have installed it. Uh, model sim is pretty big, right? So it takes time to start. It's a very powerful tool, and I recommend you learn how to use it. It'll serve you well, right? But understand also that model sim has a Unix base, so I'm going to use command line to interact with model sim. You can use the GUI, but it's not very powerful. Okay, command line scripting you should know as engineers. All right. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to CD into that directory. I think I called it simple FSM. Model sim has tab completion. So simple FSM, if I type SI and press tab, well, there are too many completions. Simu, well, there's only one. Press tab, it completes it. Okay. So once I get in here, uh, let's see. I'm going to create a work library. So I'm going to use libraries for simulating models, for simulating designs. You can also create projects. Pick one and stick to it, right? So VLib work. And let's see. If you go in here, you can see there's a work folder that it created. Don't manipulate this folder by hand. Okay? Just don't go in and change it. And there's an empty work library. Now I'm going to map my default work library into the library I created. Okay. You can call this folder anything else, but people usually don't in industry. They just call it work. Right? So VMAP work work. And you all the commands you type in here on the transcript window, you can put it in a script file and execute it. And I'll show you how. It's called as a do file. Right? OK, now what I got to do is I got to compile my modules. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm VCOM. The VCOM command, so it is help, compiles VHDL source into specified working library. OK? dot dot go up one path single pulse generator dot vht okay now the model sim compiler is more strict in terms of vhdl standards than the quarter synthesizer that's to your benefit okay so if, for example don't initialize any signals or it's a little unsure it will flag errors okay so it's up to you to go and fix it point number one point number two the VHDL we are using is VHDL. It's an older version of VHDL standard. I think it's like 87 or something, 1987. The newer versions of VHDL don't offer like magical synthesis advantages. Okay. So if you want to use more later versions of VHDL, that's fine. If somebody keeps talking about when you talk to someone in industry and they say, oh, yeah, I know VHDL 2000 or whatever, that really means they don't know what the hell they're doing. Just as an aside. Okay, so compiled, great, and uh, now if you look in the work library, if you go under the plus, there is your single pulse generator, looking good. All right. Now we compile our test bench. Of course, you can also do something like uh, you can do. How many here have used Unix? None. Anybody here use Linux? Okay, so Linux is a uh, implementation of the Unix standard. So a model sim, I think, follows BSD Unix. But anyway, you can also do that. Okay, you can do wildcards. Very powerful. Right? Okay, now let's compile our test bench. Oh, I got errors. Let's see what it is. Okay, now what I'm the model sim has its own inbuilt editor. Okay, I usually don't use that because model sim is slow. Because, but then let me just click on. Well, I think I should double click on this. And then it should open it up. As you can see, model sim is there. It's slow. Okay, there it is. Okay, where is it? Is it an out of type? What's going on here? Did I forget to include my libraries again? Okay. Oh, I did. Okay. Uh, see, and mo model sim's error, it's interesting, is different from the error that the synthesizer 
flagged the synthesizer was more on cue okay in this case it doesn't say standard logic is not defined it's just saying not of type and model sim errors are very terse again it's a unix background tool so just mean just get used to it okay done right, no problems and you can go and check well there, there are two of them and one of it is a test bench okay let's close the editor you're welcome to do the editing in model sim if you want whatever just okay so uh, let's see created libraries map the default library compile the necessary modules and the test bench now simulation it's called vsim okay single pause generator test bench that's it okay the name of your entity which should be the same name as your file okay press enter and then model sim does its thing boom okay So what it'll give you by default is a wave window. You can also look at it as a column of time entries and signals if you want. That's not very um, uh, that's not very informative in my opinion for this. Okay, so we're just going to stick to the wave window. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to use add wave all so add to the wave window all objects here. Okay, there it is. Let's say let's run for 500 nanoseconds. I don't think you need a space here. Okay, it ran for 500 nanoseconds, and uh, if you want, you can hit the lights if you can't see it. So wait a minute, what's going on here? I, how come I'm not seeing all the transitions? It's because you have to zoom full. Okay, now we use the GUI, and you can see that right there looks like there's a single pulse. Yes. Looks like our design works functionally. Well, I haven't tested all inputs. So you should go back and once I email you this design later today, this entire zipped project, along with the simulation folder, you should go around and muck around with it, okay? And get used to model sim. Next lecture, when I give you the signal tap thing, you should get used to signal tap as well. Because starting next week, like I said, we'll just get into the case studies. All right, so now, uh, let's see, we have uh, around 20 minutes. I don't know if I can do the PLL. I might reserve the PLL signal tap okay. next lecture but let me show you how to do the scripting so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another file called sim dot do yes okay. I'm going to open this in notepad plus plus and whatever I typed into model sim I'm going to put it in the script file now model sim scripting comments are hash marks okay so it's not hyphen 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 is VHDL. So hash mark uh, need to do VLib work only once. Because once you create the folder, okay, you're done. So I'm going to comment it out for now. VLib work, okay? So VMAP work work. And what do I do? VCOM dot dot slash. So what I can do is I can go back to models and I can press the up arrow. And it will show me a history, so I can just copy this. <coughs> so, okay, comments. Uh, compile, uh, mutt. I mean, this is obvious. Sorry, I'm not a comment. Okay, then what? Uh, vsim, uh, single pulse generator test bench. Usually what I do is I create a do file like this and I just keep repeating this till I don't get any errors from this. Uh, let's do this. Let me quit out of the simulation, which is quit. Hyphen sim means quit out of the simulator. Hyphen f means quit out of model sim itself, right? There, quit out of the simulator. Now what I usually do is I just say do sim dot do. Okay. So I make sure I can start the simulator. I'm not going to do that right now. Now add objects to wave window. Okay. Mm. Huh? Yep. Thank you. Wrong comment. 
So add wave star and that's it. I just leave it at that and then I type the run command in my simulator. So let me just do that. Uh, uh, uh. So do Yes, VCOM star, it'll compile everything and you don't want that. Okay. I, there might be like your INI files and all that. Yes, you want to debug one module at a time. Let's say you debug two modules and you have a component that instantiates two of them and connects them. You want to debug that next. Okay. Run finite nanoseconds and I mean, finite nanoseconds is an arbitrary time I picked. Okay. And there it is. So let's muck around with models a little bit more. Uh, let's do this. Let's see our states, okay? Let's see if that um, is, okay. So let's see, state memory is the process. Notice the process names are in there. Actually, I don't have to look at the process. If you want, you can look at it. But I'm just gonna go into the, my signal pulse generator instance and here are the signals. I want to see these two signals, okay? So select them, right click, add wave. And the reason why I do that, it shows you what the command line equivalent is. Basically, you have to go into the single post generator module and uh, do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this. Okay, into here. I think this position insert point, we don't need it. I've not seen it in older versions of models so and I want to remove it, okay? This backslash means it's continue on the next line, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another thing, like add wave is pretty, I mean, model sim is extremely powerful, right? So let me go back in here. So the model sim bookcase is very helpful. So if you go into help, PDF documentation, the user's manual is around 620 pages, okay? Very useful, you can go through tutorial. I'm just gonna go into the reference manual. I'm gonna look at my add uh, command, okay? Uh, no, cancel, I don't wanna. So I don't wanna run my Acrobat, because it's very old. Add wave, there is something called as separator, okay? Divider, sorry, not separator, divider. So I'm gonna do this. So let me remove, I'll show you what the divider is. I'm gonna remove this. Oh, by the way, you can look at different radix. Uh, very powerful, okay? And all of these has a command line equivalent. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, uh, how do I delete this? Select and hit delete, there you go. Add wave divider, uh, I, mean, I think it's called states. And you can see there's a divide, it's called states, okay? So it's very useful. Um, let me do this. So let me use all this over here. Uh, let me call add wave. This is what I usually do. Global inputs. Okay. Let me make sure it's happy with spaces. No, it's not. So this. Yeah, there. Okay. So I need... Um, Quotes. So let me just put that in there. And then add wave. I can just do clock, add wave reset. This is what I usually do, okay? Uh, actually, let's see. Global clock and reset, okay? Add wave divider. Uh, inputs and outputs. Okay, add wave. I call it input, right? Add wave. Pulse out, yes. Add wave divide. You can also change the color. You can do like a lot of things, right? Pretty much whatever you want, you can do. Because it's Unix based too, right? Uh, add wave divider um, states. Okay? All right. Now let's quit this guy, the simulator that is. And for example, this is a. Disadvantage with single tap. Let's say you want to add a signal. You realize I want to add it. You have to recompile, you resynthesize your entire design. Okay, point number one. Point number two, signal taps takes up memory. So you can either look at a lot of signals for a short amount of, a lot of signals for a short amount of time, or if you want to look for a 
large amount of time, you can look at a smaller number of signals, or you can slow down your clock. Okay. So all that you have to think about when you do signal tap, when you do model sim, once you get the hang of it, you don't have to think about all that. I'm not against signal tap, but I'm against people who don't like model sim because it's hard to use, right? The only way you learn how to use this is if you practice. Do sim. It's not really hard to use. It's just people don't know how to use it and they say it's hard to use, like anything. So let's do sim.do. Uh, you know Jordan Closer? Uh, so some of you here know Jordan. He swears by Modelson. He loves it. He's like, oh, I love Modelson. I'm like, oh, you're great. All right. Uh, aha, error. No objects found matching clock. That's because it's clock 50 megahertz. Let's fix that. Okay. And Modelson will just stop. Okay. So notice it didn't add anything else. That's fine. So clock 50 megahertz. Incorrect in my script file. Let's try again. And model sim also, as you can see, it has libraries for the different uh, circuits, okay? I mean, different ah, FPGAs. So it can do um, timing intensive simulation, but we're not going to do that. People in the industry do use model sim for timing intensive simulation, but it takes like a really long time. For example, when I was working in industry, to simulate one millisecond of real time took us 24 hours in model sim. It just, it just takes a long time. Uh, but we had to look at a lot of signals and we can't put signal tap into it. it just doesn't work, right? forget it. Actually, it wasn't signal tap, it was um, chip scope. We were using Xilinx equivalent. Uh, run 500 nanoseconds. All right, so let's do a couple of checks and then we'll call it quits for this lecture. Uh, so input is zero. And one thing I want you to, oops. Uh, slow, slow, slow. All right. Okay, so if you notice here, all right. Oh, let's see, I don't, I can try to, I don't want to close this. Oh, you can even change the labeling if you want. You since like if you have a lot of modules, um, your this path here. So let models and this will become really long. Okay, so you can even add a label to this. You can say label current state. Okay, so that's very useful. So look at that. Let's go back into models and all right. Let me zoom out so you can see. That let me choose the clock. Okay, there's the there's the clock, and if I move to the clock edges, which I can do right there, find next rising edge. You can see that this signal here changes on the rising edge. Okay, so this is probably your current state. No, it's sorry, it's next state. Interesting. So this is current state. Well, oh, this also changes on the rising edge. I was wrong. Oh, this changed on the input. This signal here is actually changing on the input, and I can't see that from here. But basically, from model sim, you should verify that your current state is what is synchronous. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So right here is on this clock edge. Okay. So you can see there's a delay of one clock cycle between your current state and your next state. Yeah. That's the way our design works. Functionally. Okay, so let me just, uh, so we're almost done. Let me see, add wave. Let's see. Let's see if there is a label. Let me just show you that because it's very useful. Height, pixels, you can even change the height, position, radix. Sorry? It is there? Oh, okay, there it is, label name. All right, so let me just do that. Uh, let me do add wave. Let me just re-add it, make sure it works. Uh, uh, uh. Ah. Actually, let me just do that. And then we'll call it quits, okay? So 
these are the most useful models and commands I use. I think I can even do this label current state. No, that didn't work. Uh, let me try putting it here. Yeah, there it is. So you have to put the label before the signal. It's giving you an error. And you can see it's very useful. Okay. All right, that's about it for model sim. So next lecture, we will do the same design, but check its functionality using signal tab. And then I'll also do the PLL, face lock loop. And starting next week, is just a bunch of case studies. So I'll email you this design, zipped version of this entire design um, after my next lecture. All right, that's it.